turf toe in a football athlete is another potentially devastating injury. You can see the ecchymosis here. There's injury injury to the uh, the plate, uh, the volar plate of the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. Early injections can sometimes be of benefit. The typical mechanism of injury is a dorsiflexed great toe. Somebody falls on the heel, causing axial loading, initially described on AstroTurf. This is what it looks like acutely. Looks painful, is painful. If you have heel pain in an adolescent male, think about an associated rheumatologic condition causing this. So this can be Severs disease in a younger individual, but if you have a foot that's a little swollen, the history doesn't really make a lot of sense, they may have pain on awakening in the morning, first steps in the morning, think about other conditions. Rheumatologic conditions would include ankylosing spondylitis. Sometimes they don't have spine involvement and they can be HLA B27 positive. Rider syndrome, the other enthesitis uh, related arthritis. Uh, you can have infection. Severs disease or calcaneal apophysitis is more common in younger males peaking at age eight. You can also have stress fractures. You can see on a lateral view sometime a uh, stress fracture that is just anterior to the calcaneal apophysis. The other thing to think about are conditions uh, that aren't what they seem, that you may not have seen them, but they've seen you. Tumors show you a case of an osteoid osteoma. This is a 13-year-old white male, family member of mine, who I really thought was having more issues because he was playing baseball too much, too long, in a growth phase, almost year-round, a lot of showcases. But he kept having right midfoot pain. No real injury. He was a baseball pitcher. He had had a rapid growth phase, growing about 10 inches in a year. He was tender in several areas, tender over his medial arch, midfoot, he had stable, normal ankle exam. He was also tender over his posterior tibialis tendon and had swelling diffusely about that tendon. He'd been having pain for about a month. His workup, his plane films were negative. He came in to see me uh, at a month following onset of his symptoms with an MRI scan which showed a medial cuneiform stress fracture. He was put in a boot. We kept him non-weight bearing for about a month, then he was full weight bearing, he improved, and that summer he returned to play baseball, and he really did pretty well for a while. A little unusual, 13-year-old growth phase, but having a medial cuneiform stress fracture. These are his films uh, early on. You can see his calcaneal apophysis is still open on the lateral view. He kind of has this diffuse osteopenia. You really can't see any fractures on the plane films. This was after he had been immobilized uh, for a couple of months and he had just gotten back to uh, uh, activities. And here is films showing some osteopenia but no fracture seen on his plane films. Again, normal plane radiographs except for maybe a little bit of osteopenia in the right side. Late summer, his films continued to show osteopenia that did not improve. In fact, it looked like it was a little bit worse. You can see the osteopenia is a talus, um, distally seen on the lateral view, but again, no fractures were visible on the plane radiographs. He had a couple months where he felt better, but then he started having pain again diffusely in his midfoot, particularly over his posterior tibialis tendon medially. So eight months after his original presentation, he developed recurrent midfoot pain, swelling. He had an ankle effusion, his ankle was stable, continued pain over the posterior tibialis tendon. He had his plane films and then he had an MRI scan follow-up second MRI scan now in eight months. X-rays of his foot, no fractures seen. You can see the osteopenia 
the base of the metatarsals and the midfoot. No navicular stress fracture was seen. This can be a little hard to see. You can get a 30 degree external rotation view to show this fracture. This is his ankle. You can see he's not yet fused his distal uh, tibial and fibular epiphysis, epiphyseal plate. Talus appears normal and ankle really appears normal. He did have an MRI scan which showed multiple changes um, in the midfoot. MRI scan showed bone edema of his medial malleolus, his medial and middle or intermediate cuneiform, and posterior tibialis tenosynovitis. He did have a ganglion cyst around the talonavicular joint, so a lot of bone edema, but no recurrent stress fracture of the uh, medial cuneiform. But now he has swelling, a cyst along his posterior tibialis tendon. So we requested a consult from a foot and ankle surgeon in his hometown. He underwent an open exploration of his posterior tibialis tendon. A tenosynovectomy was performed of his posterior tib tendon, and they did a biopsy. He had lab work for a rheumatoid profile. Rheumatoid factor was negative. The foot and ankle surgeon thought that he may have some uh, component of rheumatoid uh, look when he did the tenosynovectomy as posterior tibialis tendon. Again, a real unusual presentation in a 13-year-old. Follow-up, he used an AFO brace. He returned to baseball six months later. His foot really had improved following the tenosynovectomy and the swelling had improved. So more of a soft tissue problem now after he had an initial diagnosis of a stress fracture. Question where there really ever had a stress fracture to start off with. Then a year later, he develops uveitis, had significant problems with um, light, um, significant eye pain, and went to a pediatric ophthalmologist who diagnosed uveitis. And immediately, the pediatric ophthalmologist had him see a pediatric rheumatologist, and his laboratory studies revealed HLA-B27 positive, ANA was negative, rheumatoid factor was negative. So he basically has an ankylosing spondylitis type problem, but does not have any back symptoms at this point. So you can be HLA-B27 positive uh, and have an enthesitis that is not a spondylitis yet. It could be in the future, uh, but he was diagnosed as um, an enthesitis HLA-B27 positive, not yet with a spondylitic component. He was treated uh, with methotrexate and naproxen. Again, he still has no evidence of uh, back pain or ankylosing spondylitis clinically or by radiographs. He did a home rehab program, and he has returned to playing baseball and has been doing very well in the last two years playing um, high school uh, baseball. He does he initially wore an AFO, but now he is having no foot and ankle symptoms, but he has remained on methotrexate. He's not going to play in college. A good example of a family member, got to think something out of the ordinary. If it doesn't make sense, have midfoot pain, even though he's in a growth phase, a little unusual for an adolescent to have a medial cuneiform uh, fracture, stress fracture. So if it seems unusual, may want to work him up more quickly for a rheumatologic problem. Uh, send him to a foot and ankle surgeon, but also make sure that there is communication with pediatric rheumatologists. Adult rheumatologists are different than pediatric rheumatologists. So the, uh, the, the light bulb went off for sure here when he developed eye problems, a uv uveitis, which certainly is um, of concern for the rheumatologic diagnosis of an enthesitis-related arthritis, HLA-B27 positive. Learned a lot from this case. Next case is a 15-year-old male. He had had right foot and ankle pain for six months. These are his initial x-rays. On the lateral view, you can see a little bit of a target, if you will, uh, just below the subtalar joint. You can't really see anything on the Harris view on the right. This was about a month after he had symptoms. His calcaneal apophysis is open, and that sclerosis of the apophysis is normal. 
He was um, seen by me with having had symptoms for about two months, and his workup when I saw him included those lateral x-rays and this CT scan. You can see there is a lesion that's sclerotic around it, uh, and uh, in the central is um, not filled with bone. We were concerned about a tarsal coalition. His history is also significant in that he was taking naproxen for about two weeks before I saw him and developed a GI bleed. The naproxen was helping him, allowing him to sleep at night. When he had to stop the naproxen because of his GI bleed, his pain returned and he couldn't sleep at night. Makes you think of a specific diagnosis. What is it? Here's his bone scan. His pifocele plates are open, so the distal tibia is hot, but look diffusely in his foot, particularly the calcaneus seen on the lateral view. There's increased activity by bone scan. He has the diagnosis of an osteoid osteoma. This case was done about 10 years ago. We did do a, tech, a, a, a technetium uh, IV uh, dye to make sure that we got the lesion out since you couldn't really palpate this. By CT scan with indelible ink, we marked where the lesion was. You can see this, his intermediate dorsal cutaneous branches of the superficial perineal nerve over this area of his ankle. These small branches that uh, could have caused him some dysesthesia. We wanted to make sure we didn't injure them at the time of the excision of this. Used a clower drill. This is the exposure that was used. Put a pin through the center part of the lesion. Got an x-ray, making sure that we were where we wanted to be. A cloured drill was then used. Only time I've used this in sports medicine. Usually it's for necks, but it worked very well in this case. And you can see this red caviar appearance of the osteoid osteoma on that upper slide in the middle took out cortex both media and lateral and we did x-ray this to make sure we got it all sent the specimen to uh, the uh, uh, x-ray suite and uh, did confirm that the lesion was excised now there are probes and other ways using uh, ultrasound or technetium uh, guided in the operating room that are a little easier than thinking through this complex process this individual has gone on to become a musculoskeletal radiologist, kind of a success story and a mentoring um, success for me. Here's his um, histology, osteoid osteoma, central area that's classic seen up here on the upper part, and then this is the bone scan uh, of the lesion to make sure that we got the lesion, which we did get it all. A nidus on the inside, a normal appearing bone around it, Excellent teaching case of Napperson made it better, consistent with an osteoid osteoma when he had to quit that, started having pain again. Did not have a rheumatologic condition, but had a tumor in his, cal in his calcaneus. So heel pain in an adolescent, think about unusual things, rheumatologic conditions, tumors, a little bit unusual, but think about those. A little bit younger individuals, like age 8 to 10, are usually when the... Um, calcaneal apophysitis or Severs disease is more symptomatic, 8 to 10 in uh, girls and maybe 10 to 12 in boys. This is him 14 months post-op. It's filled in nicely. He had immediate resolution of, of pain. He does play recreational basketball. This last case is a 17-year-old male. He'd been having uh, left ankle pain for about three weeks. He was overweight, was trying to get in shape, so he was starting to run more, and he also started playing basketball a lot more than he used to. But in Kentucky, that's what people do, play basketball. So he was playing basketball to get in shape. He was playing basketball to lose weight. So he was seen with a possible fracture, stress fracture of his medial malleolus. He had gotten better when he stopped doing basketball. He did other less weight-bearing axial loading activities for weight loss, doing biking. And he didn't come back for a little while. When he came back three months after his initial presentation, he was still having some pain, although it had improved when he quit playing basketball. But if you look here, again, an increased activity on his bone scan, which was diffuse now of his left ankle. 
So this is now five months after his initial presentation. If you look at his medial malleolus, there is a definite radiolucency. It looks permeative. It is uh, thinning the cortex of the bone. The talus looks normal, fibula looks normal, but particularly that x-ray on the left looks very concerning for something bad. There's a little periosteal reaction at the metaphysis. However, this level is one that you wouldn't expect a lot of uh, cortical reaction. So this is of concern, a permeative lytic lesion of the medial malleolus. As shown by the arrow, you can see it on the anterior aspect on the lateral view. And this is an MRI scan that was obtained showing a permeative lesion of the medial malleolus. It's extruding into the soft tissues of concern for a malignancy, particularly a blue cell tumor, such as a Ewing sarcoma or a lymphoma. He underwent excision of this and has been doing well. A good history and physical is key to the correct diagnosis. This applies to foot and ankle problems as well as other musculoskeletal conditions. If you know the anatomy and understand the sport, you can make a diagnosis. Be confident in your knowledge of anatomy, then the history and physical will allow you to make your diagnosis. Certainly imaging needs to be done. Plain films, specifically of the body part. If it's one area of the foot, you can put a marker on it and look out for stress fractures. Further imaging, such as CT scan for fractures, such as a Talo fracture, is appropriate. And MRI scans for soft tissue problems. Be careful not to get tripped up. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you.